This is for Seer. This is for Cordova and everyone else who Bode betrayed. What's up, YouTube? Zero here. And today I have the final boss battle in Star Wars Jedi Survivor against Bode. In this video, I will show you the boss battle against Bode and I'll give you some tips and tricks that I learned throughout this battle, hopefully making it a little bit easier for you to defeat him. It did take me a few tries to finally break through until the end. Before I get into it, I do want to say if you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more Star Wars Jedi Survivor content. I do do a bunch of other video games, so feel free to check those out as well. Without further ado, let's get into the boss battle. So against Bo, there are going to be four rounds. The first round, Marin is going to help you out. She's going to do some damage to Bode. You can play the round either aggressive or non-aggressive. It doesn't really matter. Marin is going to do some damage to you. I was using the cross guard stance for that round because it's easier at breaking opponents and does a little bit more damage. Bode isn't extremely aggressive in that round. You do have to watch out for a few of Bode's attacks, but the first round's not going to be too hard. Utilize Marin as much as possible in that round. You saw that Bode went to grab Marin and place a detonator on her back. When he did, it allowed me to attack him. Just block and try to perfect parry, and that will allow you to break through his block meter in the first round and get some damage off on him. Same in the second round, although Bo does have a few unblockable attacks, which if you're less aggressive in the first round, the unblockable attacks will come into play in the first round, but I saw them more in the second round. There are two that you're really going to have to worry about. The first is going to be his blaster shot unblockable attack. He does utilize his blaster a decent amount in the battle. And that's another reason why I preferred to use the cross guard stance. There is an upgrade on the cross guard stance that allows you to send back a very significant blaster shot. Not just the normal blaster shot, but an exploding blaster shot if you have that upgrade. So I do recommend if you have that upgrade on the cross guard stance, utilizing that in the first two rounds against Bode. Because a perfect time block on a blaster shot will send back that explosive shot that you just saw there, dealing extra damage to Bode, which is why I prefer the cross guard stance as one of the two stances. He utilizes that blaster when he does throw out grenades, so watch out for those because he can deal a significant amount of damage. The second unblockable attack is a little bit harder to avoid, and it can do a significant amount of damage. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but... That second round, you do have to watch out for those grenades. Try to make sure that you are perfect parrying. Get up close to Bode. Make sure you're perfect parrying. And after you break his block meter, get a couple of attacks in. And again, if you have the cross guard stance, utilize that to your advantage. After you get through the first two rounds, Bode is going to get more aggressive. And he is going to start utilizing different attacks. Now, as he is beating Cal into a pulp, and I'm about to unleash the beast, go into the darkness, allow the darkness to take over. The other unblockable attack in those first two rounds, and he also does it later as well, is a grab. Now, what I found was the easiest to avoid his grab. Jump up into the air as he glows red and as he's leaping forward click dodge while you're in the air and that's a great way to avoid that attack after you avoid that that's another good way to deal damage to bode now in the next two rounds bode gets more aggressive and this is where i use the combination of the cross guard stance and the double bladed saber the double bladed saber is really great defensively and is also really quick so that's going to allow me to block his a aggressive attacks a little bit easier. And I'm going to be able to hit him a little bit quicker. But in these next two rounds, Bode will send force, wind, whatever you want to call it, 
in the air, so make sure that you are dodging at the appropriate moment. He will stick his lightsaber into the ground, and that's when you know you're going to have to get ready to dodge those attacks. He has a couple. He has a couple that are vertical in nature, and you're going to have to dodge either left or right. And then he has one that he sends on the ground, so you're going to have to jump over that. He also has a ground pound, an unblockable ground pound. Actually, these are unblockable, so just be aware of them. And then he'll start getting aggressive. He'll charge at you. He'll start swinging a bunch. That's when you just have to start blocking and be aware because in the middle of his flurry, he will also have unblockable attacks. So make sure you dodge away for it. But after his swinging flurry, if you are able to block a lot, you can either break his stance or he'll pause for a second, allowing you to get a few hits off. But that's where I do like the double bladed saver because it is quicker. So that allows you to get a couple of hits off after you break him and not have to worry about the slowness of the cross guard. Even though the cross guard is great for the first two rounds, it gets a little bit harder to utilize in the next two rounds, which is why I like the fastness of the double bladed. You also can embrace the darkness. Now you do have to be very careful. Even though you embrace the darkness slowing down time, you can only get a few hits off before Bode is back in action. He does go back to his normal self after you embrace the darkness and get a few hits off, so just be aware of that because you're not going to be able to just continually hit while you are embracing the darkness. Bode will eventually just go back to hitting like he normally does. He won't be slowed anymore. So when you're in that slow-mo time, you're going to have to block and dodge his unblockable attack. So just be aware of that. Now we are coming down to the end of the video. You get to a point where you're going back and forth with Bode and you have to click square a bunch of times. That's when you know you are in the final push to defeating Bode. Again, this last round, I do prefer utilizing the double blade because it is a very quick blade. I would recommend just being very quick. This final push of the battle, Bode is insanely aggressive. One move that I do like to utilize if you have unlocked it with the double blade is you hold L1, and this is for the PlayStation, and you click square, which lunges you forward. It's kind of like a chopper where you can lunge forward and deal a little bit of damage. It gives you an opportunity to be a little bit away from Bode, flying at him with a lightsaber spin, dealing some damage. And as soon as you do that, I would recommend dodging away from him because he utilizes a lot of unblockable attacks and very quick attacks in that final round. So utilizing a saber that is quick, especially the double bladed, is really going to be fantastic for that round. But after he does a couple of his unblockable attacks or his flurry, will allow you to get some openings and finish him off. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, may the force be with you. Peace.